Babysit number three is uh, another Bob in, uh, in Dartford, in Kent. Uh, he was a reluctant landlord. <coughs> the property was left, it wasn't in a great condition. And uh, he had, how much did he have tie up in his property equity? Well, he, he would have been really happy if he walked away with £15,000. So we didn't negotiate much on that. So we said, OK, Bob, we'll give you £15,000. As long as we give you £15,000, do you mind when we deliver the money? He said, no, I don't need the money now. I just want to get rid of this property. And we agreed that when our buyer completes, he's going to get paid then from our back-end profits. The chalking pattern we use is, Bob, if we can give you the full price of the house, you have some flexibility around the time scale in which we deliver you the money. And he said, yeah, I've got some flexibility. I don't need it straight away. So we said, OK, we deliver it some way down the line. So, so we took over his existing mortgage, and uh, he had a mortgage of £115,000. Um, we took £5,000 up front from a couple that worked in a hospital. So a trainee doctor and a nurse, they loved the fact that they could live <coughs> a two-bedroom property. They didn't have any kids. They were renting as well in London, and this stuff is slightly outside London, about zone six. Uh, so they love the fact that they can move in and call this their own home. They had fifteen thousand pounds actually in their bank account, but because the property needed some care, some um, decoration, change of carpets, they only decided to put five thousand pounds down, and we were very happy with that because they they were going to spend the rest of their money on doing the house up. But they moved their five thousand pounds deposit. £480 is our net cash though after we pay Bob's mortgage, which is about £807. So that will give us £28,800 over a five year period. If they go longer, we'll make more money. So our back end profit is £37,000. But remember, we owe Bob £15,000 from our back end profit. So after we pay Bob, we're going to end up with £22,000 net. How much is it still worth? £55,800. How many tenants have we moved in? None. How much do we pay for this? None. What maintenance have we done? Well, just a sign. <laughs> <laughs> just a walk. <laughs> Anybody like fancy doing one of these? Yeah. So that's three babysits. Uh, does anybody know what a lemon is? Yeah. Has anybody got a lemon? Yeah. We're going to do a, uh, a deal structuring system at the end of the evening where we have an online deal analyzer and we put underperforming properties into the deal analyzer and it tells us what, what, what price we should be selling the property for, what sort of rates we should be selling for in the terms. So if anybody's got a lemon and they want the answers to what to do with those lemons, stick around afterwards and we're going to do that uh, probably out there on our laptop. So, a lemon is a property that you don't want to own. Can you, uh, can you quickly come to the front and uh, sort of measure out? Again. Thank you. Um, it's an underperforming property that probably where the rental income is far less than the mortgage payment, so negative cash flow. It could also be a property, thank you, that's what someone served up a lemon and it feels pretty bad. So it's a property where the mortgage payments are less, the, the rental payments are less than the mortgage payments. So every month you put your hand in your pocket and you subsidise it. I don't mind admitting that I have a few of these because I bought some properties off plan uh, 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Off plan, city centre developments, in fact they're great deals, some were offering cash backs, most of them were no money in. But then we end up with properties where there's uh, negative cash flow because of service charge and ground rent, problems with finance, exposure to increased mortgage rates and also is probably where the, uh, the value of the property is far less than the outstanding mortgage. Um, so we end up doing this, we end up with empty pockets. So I'm gonna, we're going to show you some examples of some lemons. Let's think about this for a minute and show some examples. How do we get rid of lemons? Properties that are not performing, properties that are draining our pockets. How do we get rid of properties that we really, really don't want? This was such a great deal. City centre, uh, Manchester. Such a great deal, £12,000 cash back. Uh, all I needed to do was find a tenant. I bought two of those, got 24000 cash back. I didn't really need, don't need to worry about tenants until today, where I've got some serious problems. Do you still have the cash back? Uh, well, I spent that. <laughs> <laughs> like I've been served a lemon. <laughs> okay, let's not that. So, it, this was serious. It was basically, if we can remember the numbers, um, £40,000 in negative equity 
and £135 per month in negative cash flow because of the high, rent, uh, high service charge and ground rents. Well, Dr. Tommy, look at this property in Manchester. I really don't want to own it. It cost me a fortune in service charges, ground rent, agents, letting it, obviously, repairing the dishwasher, repairing the uh, washing machine, and all that. So he said, we need to get rid of this. I said, okay, Doug, uh, let me do a little bit of research. I went on Rightmore and just checking the blog near house development. There was only one property on the side there, one bedroom flat, about the same. Same, well, I think it was two floors up even. So £99,000. Well, bear in mind he had a mortgage of 137500 That's about £40,000 upside down. So what do you do with that? How do you get rid of this without making a loss? If he was going to sell it today, he would make at least £40,000. Get out of his pocket. Oh, here we go. £40,000 plus his stay agency's fees. So, we sit down, put the numbers on the deal analyzer. I said to Doug, Doug, we have to make it really, really attractive to a buyer. So how we make it attractive? Well, by putting a small deposit down. Nice, one bedroom, Manchester city centre apartment, £5,000 moves you in, no mortgage required, £807 a month, flat is yours. Ready to move in, nice, clean, beautiful place. So, this property was let for £525. His mortgage is £550, but plus he pays service charge, in ground rent, maintenance fees, stay agent fees. Okay? That property was nearly about £150 in negative cash flow. So £40,000 in negative equity and about £150 in negative cash flow. Well, sure, you don't want to keep this. So now we move the buyer in. A bus driver who had a coach company, um, he was driving between London and Manchester. So he loved the fact that this flat was very, very close to Victoria Station, the coach station and he could use it as his residence. It was very close to work as well. So, I love the fact that he could move in £5,000 deposit. He had, I think, £11,000 in his bank account, but it is actually in our benefit for him to move with lower deposit because we are in negative, uh, negative equity. So, we moved him with £5,000 deposit. His monthly payment is £805, so we make £260 cash flow. Remember, he's not a tenant. That's why we don't like lease options. If it was a lease option client, we are still responsible for paying the ground rent, service charge, maintenance fees, and all that. So, we don't pay that anymore. He pays all that. So, a property that was 150 pounds in negative cash flow is all of a sudden 260 pounds in positive cash flow. So, and we'll lock the guy in for five years. So for five years, he can't cash out. We sold it to him for 144,000 pounds nearly about £45,000 above the market value and we locked them in for five years. Over a five year period this is going to give us £15,600 in positive cash flow and we have zero back end. Property that was in £40,000 in negative equity we turned it into profits of £20,000. How would that make you feel? £20,000 20, profit but I've also made up to 40000 loss. That's so worth 60,000 60, pounds. 60,600 that's worth that deal. That was 40,000 in negative equity and 135 pounds odd in negative cash flow. If any of you got any of those deals that you bought off plan well, back in. Why would you pay so much extra? Well, very well, simple. If you are buying a house from a bank for 100,000 pounds, are you actually paying 100,000 pounds if you bought it on a mortgage? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Over a 25 year period, you pay nearly three times. You probably pay about 250 to 300,000 yeah. pounds. Well, I tell this guy, look, is the purchase price too expensive for you? He says, yes. Well, would you like to reduce it? Yes. Well, then, if you make 200 pounds optional overpayments every month, you will pay off your mortgage within 15 years. That will save you more money than we would pay the bank. He loves the fact. Uh, Lemon number two, again this is another one of my own properties, um, wasn't in negative <coughs> cash flow or in negative equity actually, it was just a property I didn't want to own anymore, one bedroom ex council flat uh, with a garden, the garden had a nice summer house in it, that's what sold the property at the end, but it had a very noisy neighbour upstairs who was a council tenant, he had no carpets on the floor, but he had 
large boots which you could wear all day long. <laughs> and he also had a very large dog, which upset my tenants. So every six months I was replacing my tenants. And every six months the tenants would leave and I'd have to send somebody around to cut the grass, tidy up the property, find another tenant, have a bit of a void <coughs> period. So it was a bit of a pain to own. So I just decided to, to move it on. I had a mortgage outstanding of about 76, 74, 76,000, something like that. Um, I bought it on a no money down deal. It was valued at about 100 when I bought it. Um, I ended up with a mortgage of about 76. And we decided to sell the property, 100,000 value. We decided to sell it to a lovely lady with a bit of cash for 125,000. She had a survey carried out on the property. They confirmed it was 100,000 value. She said, I'm happy to pay 125 because I can't get a mortgage and I want to own a property. So she gave us 25,000 up front. She was a self-employed teacher earning 600 pounds a month. So no one will give her a mortgage. Well, a bit more than that. The rent was a bit more than that. Yeah. Probably so, on, on the car. Well, she was earning on her basic earning statement 600 pounds, plus she had, had private sessions, private, uh, private teachings. That's why she loved the fact that she, she could do those teachings in the summer house. Mm. So that's why she exactly. loved the property. So we cashed by 300 pounds. 18 months, uh, 18,000 over five years. So, how much is this still worth? She's gonna, when she cashes out in five years, she's going to have 18,000 pounds back in pocket. So, from a property that basically I did the no money down deal on, small mortgage outstanding, one bedroom, X pounds for flat, you wouldn't expect to make a lot of money out of this type of property. <coughs> we made 61,000 pounds profit. And, uh, I no longer pay the ground rent and service charge, I no longer maintain the property. Uh, so lemon three, Masood, this is a property uh, in uh, city, Fire City Airport, and in London. I saw the town in East London, basically. Um, friend of Doug's, um, she bought this property at the height of the market, 2007. She paid £240,000. When I look at the prices now, it was worth 160. So £70,000 upside down, again. And the beautiful thing was, she had a, a mortgage express mortgage on it, and it was, <coughs> the monthly payments were really, really cheap. So it was about 2.25%. above base. Lifetime tracker. <coughs> so, okay. It's quite Anybody got one of those? Yeah. 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 So, we moved the buyer in, and I, again, I put it on our deal analyzer. I uh, said, okay, we're going to sell it for. Pretty much what you bought it for, for 240, but you can move it at 7,000 pounds. Plus, 7,000 pounds moves you in, no mortgage required, own a two bedroom flat, <coughs> four stops away from the Canary Wall. How does that make you feel? Mm -hmm. So, a uh, lady that was working in Leeds and she had a new work placement in um, London, she decided to buy it. She said, Well, 7,000 pounds, ideal. She paid us the 7,000 pounds more, but then she pays 1113 pounds a month. So that gives us a net capital of 551 pounds. But remember, we are also repaying the existing mortgage. Our existing mortgage probably costs about 420 pounds, but we only take 550 cash flow, and the rest we use to repay the negative equity down. So year five, when she cashes out, well actually, we have, we're gonna make 33,000 pounds from cash flow, but we're not going to make any money from back end. So she is reducing the uh, mortgage amount, same rate like we are. Does that make sense? So we'll show that on the deal analyzer later. How much is it still worth? 40,000 pounds. Well, actually it's more. Remember it was 70,000 pounds in negative equity. 70,000 <coughs> in negative equity. So we I mean, say it was 70,000 pounds. If she had to sell the property today, she had to pay 70,000 pounds to the bank. So we saved it up and made 40,000 pounds profit for us. How much did we pay for this? Nothing. And the tenants we moved in? None. How much maintenance are we carrying out? Well, I'll only sign. Here, actually. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, so some of these properties you may already own, and you might want to know how you can get out of them, which seems an impossible task. But there are a lot of people that own these that no longer want to own them. It's a massive, massive market. If you're going to an estate agent as an investor and saying, Mr. Estate Agent, have you got a property on your books that needs renovation or that I can buy under market value? 
you would have been the 20th person that day asking that question. If you go to an estate agent and ask the question, Mr. Estate Agent, do you ever come across properties that are in negative equity? If you do, what do you do with them? Can you sell them? Probably no. So do you think you're the only person asking that question? Probably yes. There's a lot of opportunity for us as investors to pick up good opportunities like these. This lady was going to be repossessed. We told her to go to court and offer the judge uh, £100 per month extra on top of her normal monthly payment to catch up the arrears. The judge agreed. Because we did that for the lady, we stopped the repossession. She allowed us to babysit a property for her. £40,000. So, we're going to show you a scenario where we actually purchased a property using a buy-to-let mortgage in the traditional sense, but we're still using what we call a no-money left-in strategy. I call it no money down, but in fact we do put some money in on Friday, but we get it back on Monday. So it's no money down in a real sense. Um, so you can still buy properties using insurance <coughs> contracts as an exit strategy, but it gives you more opportunities in terms of your buying strategy. Um, and we call this strategy some now, some later, using the instalment contract as an exit strategy. So I just, just remind us of the... Uh, We've had a house in Graves and Kent, uh, a lady called Jane, um, my love. Yeah. <laughs> uh, property was worth about 160, so we agreed to pay her uh, 110,000 pounds. Now, 25,000 pounds later. So she had only 24,000 pounds in debt, she had 24, what she was going to do with the money? Well, she was going to buy a land for herself because she was a gypsy, Roman and gypsies. Obviously, they loved living with uh, other Roman and gypsies on a uh, land and in caravans. So that's where she wanted to move in. She didn't want to live in that neighborhood anymore. So she wanted to go and live with her um, associates or um, relatives. So you see the need here. I mean, what she wanted was all of the money straight away because everybody wants all of the money straight away. But what she needed was enough money to go to pay off the mortgage of 24,000, and she wanted enough money to go and buy the land and the caravan so she could immediately leave the house and go and live in the caravan, and that solved all her problems and get on with her life. So we gave her what she needed, not what she wanted, which is 110,000 pounds now. And as we said, we, we said we'll give you 110 now, we pay you 25,000 later, making a total of 135,000 mathematicians amongst you. Value 160, agreed 135, so below market value, but it's a better no market value because we've only paid a 110 now. So we actually went off and got a mortgage uh, value based on the 160, we got a mortgage of 120. So we gave her the most of that mortgage, we raised 120,000 pounds, gave 110 and had 10,000 pounds cash back minus buying expenses. So we've got £10,000 cash back, we've controlled the house, we actually own the house now, we owe it £25,000. And that, uh, oh there's a the property there, uh, just an ordinary sort of three bedroom terrace property. Uh, but it was lovely inside, there were seven internal doors and each door cost her £1,000. She imported the tiles uh, in the bathroom from Italy. It was absolutely superbly decorated inside. The carpet was that thick. I was so pleased walking in there, I spent six hours walking in the house. So it's Jane and Masood and her love child. Jane was very, very happy and she wrote us a testimonial. You probably can't see that, but there's Masood, that's Doug and Masood. Masood's name is spelt with a little love heart. <laughs> so we now, own, we now own the property, got £10,000 in the bank. Uh, we owe her £25,000 and then uh, we sold it on an instalment contract. Because that property was really, really beautiful, remember, expensive doors, expensive tiles, nice, beautiful property, I decided, okay, we can sell it slightly more than the market value, perhaps slightly more, more than the market value. Mm -hmm. And I decided 189995 sounds right, so I'm going to stick it on right now and let's see if it sells. Well, we sold a few negative equity properties well above market value, why we can't sell normal properties above market value too. So, 5,000 pounds deposit moves you normal which require total purchase price 189,995 uh, moving tomorrow. So, we've got a couple of doctors that move in from Luton all the way down to Gravesend. 
So how do we move people that want to live in Luton to Gravesend? By giving them a little bit of 